Hi, I'm Don Harper Nelson, and you're watching Inside Athletics with Otto Bolden. Pleased to welcome fellow UCLA Bruin Don Harper to the program. Thank welcome, so Don. Thank you so much for having me. One of the things that I love about your story is that when 2008 starts, you are arguably fourth best in your camp. And yet, you make the Olympic team, and then you go on to win the gold. Yeah. Is there something that the experts overlooked about you? Or were you always coming and we didn't notice? I was always coming and you didn't notice. I think for me, um, even at NCAAs my senior year, I messed up and I got fourth. And Bobby even told me that wasn't the place you were supposed to get, so that one was on you. And I said, you're right. Um, but it took me time to really accept that and to really go out and say, you know what? They are not better than me because in the training camp, it was hard to get spanked and get fourth when we would practice. And you line up and you say, only three can make the team. And, but then I would tap them sometimes and I'm thinking, see, they know I'm there, so they know when we line up. You know, it was really just me bringing my confidence to the track. That's all that it was. You know, I didn't necessarily need a commentator to say, oh, wait, look out for Dawn Harper. I needed to, you know, think about that myself and say, you know what, make them look at you. Is it maybe then that being sort of the overlooked person mm -hmm. made it easier for your path to that goal in 2008? Because it, as you said, if a commentator had said, this is somebody to look for, maybe you have a bigger target on your back because mm -hmm. your, your win in 2008 was one of the, one of the bigger surprises mm -hmm. in the games. You know, I would say maybe that did make the path a little easier. You know, let's just be truthful. Yeah, yes. I would say definitely <laughs> because, you know, now all of a sudden it is Dawn Harper is in the race. But at that time, I can't quite say that I really saw it that way. In reality, when I looked at it, I felt just as stressed as if I was supposed to win because I wanted it so bad. When I lined it up, I felt as if I should be on the podium. Bobby Kersey, that's what he told me. He said, you make it to those finals and you belong on that podium. We've raced for this. We've trained for this. You know how to do it. And it's one thing to say it, but then I'm lining up and I'm like, does Bobby Kersey know what he's talking about? Right. Can I really do this? So, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen you emotional that often, mm -hmm. but there is a piece of tape that I saw. Uh, I, it may have been for NBC. And essentially you were looking to camera and saying, America, I'm sorry that the person that you thought was going to win in Beijing mm -hmm. didn't win, but I promise you, I went out there, I did the work like everybody else. I put my heart on the line out there, and I won that gold medal, and I'm deserving of that gold medal. Tell me what prompted that. First of all, you did a great job. That was exactly what I said. <laughs> you want to take me back to that moment, do you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, what prompted that was the blood, sweat, and tears that literally went into this medal that I came out on top and got for my country. And mm -hmm. I understand in any sport, we cheer. My household cheers for me. Someone else's ho household cheers yes. for them. That's what track and field sports, point blank across the board, is made of. But when someone from your own country comes out victorious for you, yes. because I promise you, red, white, and blue means just as much to me as the next person from the US. Um, to come out with that medal and to feel as if because the person that you wanted didn't get it, it didn't mean as much. That tainted my dream a little bit. I mean, as a little girl, when Jackie Joyner Kersey told me, you know, you can go out there and do this, and I did it for my country and my family and my coach, and you guys say, nah, you're not the person we mm. wanted. It's like, so my feet didn't move as fast as the other person's. Right. My heart, you know, when I, when I, you know, had an injury and I needed to come back, my drive, you know what I mean? And my waking up early in the mornings and going to sleep at night crying because I wanted so bad didn't mean as much as the next person. Wow. That hurt. I mean, I was on my knees many nights crying about that because I was just like, Lord, help me to not just ball up in a you know corner and just not go back to track and field because I just felt like it wasn't fair. It bothers I, you that much. Like you, you, you literally felt as though people weren't as happy for you because you were not the favorite to win. I, honest, I would say I know they weren't. I mean, that's how it came across. I very seldom did I read anything. Now, when I met people, they were like, oh, we're so happy for you, for you. But everything that I read, everything that I read put down everything that I had done. And I'm like, do you understand that I've, that I had knee surgery February 29th before our trials. 2008? Yes. Wow. To make the team, first of all, and fourth best in the camp. Right. And then to go make the team, go and get a gold medal when I felt as if, and I tell kids now when they're saying like, oh, you know, how can I overcome this and that? And I say, if I can overcome the world, the globe. Literally. Telling me you can't, 
you can definitely overcome some people in your community telling you that don't know you just like the world doesn't know me. But I will prove to them time and time again that I promise you I love my country just like you do. I'm, I'm stopped on the street occasionally mm -hmm. by somebody who watched the Olympics yep. last year in 2012. Okay. And they say, what happened with the hurdlers last year? <laughs> it seemed like there were some hurdlers on the team who had some real disagreements or problems with each other. Mm -hmm. I want you, in your words, to tell me what that situation was last year in London, including mm -hmm. the whole broadcast and the mm -hmm. press and everything. Tell me what that was. What it was was a day of about seven to eight interviews, yes. such as we're doing now. Yes. One interview was chosen that they felt had the most controversy that they could pull from, which I believe it didn't. <laughs> um, they chose that to try and twist um, silver and bronze medalists from the U.S., twist our words and twist who we are mm -hmm. um, and what I know I represent, twist that into something very hateful, um, saying that we did not like Lolo, we don't believe she worked as hard, it was because she was light-skinned. First of all, I have to say this. I have been dark since the day I got here. <laughs> that has absolutely nothing to... We come in all different colors, shapes, right. fashion, forms. That's great. Um, in that interview, though, they tried to say that we threw a teammate under the bus. We, you know, believe that she got too much publicity and everything. All I said was, I believe that I worked really hard. You know, I'm just blessed to be here, come mm -hmm. back and try and defend my title, came up a little short. Kelly goes on to say what she sa says. If you know me, my comment at the end, I'm silly, I'm goofy. Right. I said, bam, just like that. And all of a sudden, I am one of the most hated medalists in the world. And What was that like? That tore me up because... Because now it's Beijing all over again. It's, I would say it's worse than Beijing. Because, it was worse. Uh, because... It just wasn't right because um, to come back four years later and believe that you can wipe it all away and say, you know what, I'm going to go out here and show that, okay, me, I'm, I'm, another, I'm a totally different individual, I'm coming back, mm -hmm. you know, I've overcome a lot of things these four years, let's ignore what happened four years ago and just say this race is made of these eight individuals, and I crossed that line, and for you to say, no, because of some words that you said, you didn't mean it, you know, you running that fast meant nothing. Right. Um, your medals mean nothing. You're no one to us now in the U.S. And I'm like, Lord, help me. I can't win. Right. <laughs> I, I literally, like, I mean. <laughs> even when I win, I can't win. Even when I win, I can't yes. win. And that hurts. So for me, I shut off Twitter shut off everything um, before I shut it off though. I sent one question and I said, if you can tell me what I said that was wrong and what was hateful, I will apologize and take it all back. Mm -hmm. And immediately the tweets turned from, you're so mean in this, it turned into, well it seemed like mm -hmm. you didn't like her. Right. And I'm like, now Lolo knows I have nothing against her. She knows this. So I, I said, I need to make a point that she knows. The world can keep coming up with what they want. I want when she does her interviews that she knows in her heart. Don Harper didn't mean anything from that. So I went to her. I sent her an email, tried to call her, and I finally talked to her. And I said, understand that whatever was, you know, misconstrued and twisted around when you heard it, hear from my words. Now, you can say, you know, believe whatever you want after this. I told her I meant no harm. You worked hard. You worked extremely hard to get on that team to come back from what you yes, have. She did. And I, I admire that about her. You fought for that fourth place. And there's nothing wrong, you know, with you representing your country and getting fourth and being upset and coming back and fighting again. And she said, I thank you for that. And she was like, I didn't think we had any problems. And so I said, as long as we're fine, we're fine. So let's wrap this up and move on, the, this whole mm -hmm. thing last year. So the team was yourself, Kelly Wells, Lolo Jones. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand being a former athlete, you don't have to love everybody you compete against, right. especially in this business where right. everybody's competing for one. one single spot at the top yeah. of that podium. Would you say now, on June 30th, 2013, that the relationship with everybody, with those three, mm -hmm. is okay? 
Definitely. I would definitely say it is okay. Um, she even told me, you know, go out there in Moscow and go get them, you know, because she didn't make the team. Um, and Kelly as well. You know, yes. Kelly told me because she didn't make the team. They were like, go and represent for us. You know, they even said, show these young girls what it's all about. You know, <laughs> so I mean, it's it's fun. We understand that when we line up, all bets are off. Afterwards, we go back to being Lolo, Dawn, and, you know, Kelly. Yes. It just is what it is. Um, Jackie Joyner Kersey was one of the reasons that I came to UCLA. I know Jackie Joyner Kersey is certainly the one of the reasons that you came to UCLA. I want you to tell me about what your memory of Jackie when you were growing up and getting into this sport. Wow, that's a good one. For me, Jackie, I will never forget, she came to track practice in the summertime, running for the Railers, the same um, summer track coach, Coach mm -hmm. Nino Fenoy. And she came to me and she said, Dawn, I believe that you have something special in you. And she said, if you hold on to that and believe in yourself, she said, the sky is the limit for you. Wow. And I said, is she talking to me? Uh, I know it's just me and her in this corner, but, right. you know, I'm just, this is Jackie Joanna Kersey that's saying that to me. And she said she saw something special in me. And um, through the years we've talked on the phone, I've called her through the ups and the downs. You know, she's called to check on me, you know, saying, Bobby says you're looking good at practice. Keep it up. You know, wow. you tweak something. This is how you get through that. And now when I go home and for them to scream my name in the same sentence as Jackie Joanna Kersey blows my mind. And when me and her go places back home, it's like, do you know who those two are? And I'm like, they're talking about me too, you know? So it, it means the world because now I'm giving back. I'm telling little kids to believe in themselves and they believe what I'm saying as I believed in what she said because they see me as I've done things that Jackie Joanna Kersey has done now. And just to even say that sentence is a blessing. Well, I enjoy watching you compete and you. it's not a secret to you that anytime they ask me, what is the event you're looking forward <laughs> to? Usually I say the hurdles even though I was a former sprinter. All the best to you. Good Thank luck you in so Moscow. Much. Thank you so much. It means the world.